Hi one and all, Head School here with an update for my Night Stalkers Army project. This is the penultimate video. This is the uh, seventh element for my army and it is a regiment of scarecrows. So following on from last time's regiment, this is designed to sit side by side so it can form a horde. And as you can see, um, they go really well together. They're painted in the same colour scheme as I've gone for the rest of my army with the whitey grey flesh and the purple and black energy wisps. I really like how these have turned out and I think it's a really nice scenic style base. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys like it too. So the next element and my final element will be a shadow hawk. It's David here from Wargaming Now, guys and we've got my second to last element and for this it's going to be another unit of Rackin Warriors. Now you're going to get bored of me saying this, it's the same type of paint scheme um, so we've used a lot of strong tone and highlighting and, and the basing's the same on it. Now the reason I've gone for a second unit, it all goes back to the synergy with the Birthing Daughter um, and Strider. Now obviously if you're within six inches of the Birthing Daughter she has Aura Strider so these are can charge over anything, be unhindered and they are pretty bad in combat I'm not going to lie, with a 5 up to hit uh, and 4 up defence, so they're going to die pretty quickly, but not as quickly as the wretches. So these, that's why I've chosen, that's why um, you have to have some regiments to unlock other things, so this was a cheap way of unlock. Hi, Palo War again. Uh, final unit um, of my elements is another unit of primes. So similar to the other ones, red armour plating and green scaling. Uh, just another chaffy unit. Um, this time still stuck with the temple basin, um, but I put, put a bit more detail and effort into the, the basin on this one. Uh, used a, bit, a few neon paints on plants, put a few schools on the base. So yeah, they've all got shields and swords and stuck with the blue flames as well, but pretty much just the same again, just a unit of primes, a nice hard hitting unit that sticks around for a while and uh, just annoys the enemy because they've quite a high nerve for a small unit. But yeah, that's my last element. Uh, so looking forward to getting them down on the table um, and in the ambush games, especially at the uh, the sci-fi con coming up in a, a few weeks. But yeah, this is all good. So yeah, looking forward to playing them. Thank you. Chris, back again. Uh, my next elements that I'm going to talk about are my two headquarters elements. Um, the first one is a sorcerer. Um, now the comical thing about this is that's actually spelled as in a source um, because they're not actually magic users per se. What they are is a mobile buffing machine. The idea is that they're going along cooking lots of brews, dishing them out as and when needed. Um, and these can come up, uh, can, can be, become very, very useful um, in the middle of a fight or anything like that, because they buff anything within six inches of them. Um, so positioning with them is, is necessary. You've got to get it bang on to get the most units uh, to be buffed. Um, but you've got to do it every single turn, each buff just lasts for that one turn, so it's it's good in the sense that it flows. Um, now the basing, obviously I've kept the same as I have with the cavalry, just a little, uh, few little tufts. I thought I'd throw in a little, uh, few coloured flowers in there just to give it a bit of a uh, different feel to it. Um, so that's the sorcerer. Now this guy is the feastmaster. Um, the whole idea that I had with my halfling army was to have the element that's moving ahead of the main force. Um, there were all the poachers, the hunters and so on, to get the camp ready and get the food ready. This guy's in charge of that. Um, as you can see, he's, he's armed with cleavers and chef whites. Um, he's got that whole military culinary feel to him. Um, he's already got himself a nickname as well uh, from my colleague John. He's known as Samwise Segal um, because obviously he's a halfling and he's a bit of a ninja. Um, basing wise, I've started to do a bit more of a, a deep brush feel to it, like it's coming out of a woods. Um, 
and yeah, he's he's he does what he says on the tin. And he points him at something and he kills it. So that's that element done. Um, my next element is going to be my final element, and it's going to be the element that actually made me want to do the half things when I first saw them. Hi everybody, it's John back with more ogres. So let's take a look at these guys. So decided to change up the warriors a little bit and go for some two-handed weapons to get a little bit more punching power. Uh, decided with the first time doing these that, you know, sort of an iconic weapon of big scary ogres would be, well, axes. So as you can see, everyone's got an axe. And definitely enjoying the little bit of the kit where it's a little the, the old come and get some. Um, you can see I'm stay, staying with the same basing pl plan, which is the grass with bits of various flock I've found, some pebbles and whatnot. Um, and as I said, staying with the same color scheme. The sort of white with the light, sort of light blue tone to it, giving it kind of like a sort of pale blue look. The jade, jade, you know, cloth, brown leather, and again, because they're ogres, lots of straps. My God, they have a lot of straps on these things. But yeah, hoping these guys will give, you know, my ogres so far are pretty durable. Looking for something, like I said, to maybe pop into a flank charge and smash smash things to bits. And hoping that these boys and girls right here will be the ones for it. Hi all, Head School here back again, and this is my final element for my army. This is a Shadow Hulk. This is an absolute beast of a character monster, and it's going to stomp on all of my enemies. It's absolutely brilliant. It has high nerve, it has really great attacks, and really adds an element of force to my army. I've gone with the traditional scheme uh, for my army, which is the white and grey and purple, and uh, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. It's not very often I say that, but it is true. I'm really pleased with how this turns out. So guys, I can't wait to get this on the table and escalate this force all the way up to 2,300 points. So, see you soon, hopefully on the battlefield. Hi, it's David here from Wargaming Old Guys, and this is my final element. Now, my final element is a unit of claw shots. Now, you can't have a Rackin army, ambush or otherwise, without at least one. Now, ambush is small points, so it's got. It's, I think it's got to have a one unit. Obviously, a larger force will have to have ha, really have to have two. These are um, long range, but uh, quite high piercing value. Um, so there's only five shots, so it's more of a, a sniping. Um, a sniping weapon to actually cause nerve rolls on things like characters and, and low nerve units. Um, I think the, these are especially good and nice and easy. Now, their base models is the same as the Warriors, and then there are some resin extras and things like that. They weren't that, that hard to put together. They're easy to paint. They are um, really one of the better units, I think, um, but I, I really enjoy painting them. Um, now, my next point of call for this army, I'm going to expand it up to 2,400, uh, 2,300 points, sorry, and with a few extra options thrown in there. So we're going to be hopefully carrying on and doing some more videos and um, uh, more videos and progressing the army build uh, through another set of videos. Hi, it's Chris again. Uh, on to my final element with the halflings. What we have here is the unit called the poachers. Um, as soon as I saw these, saw them in the list, I fell in love with them. And that's why I've done the halflings, just so I could do these guys. Um, they're uh, a skirmish unit. Um, they're very fast. Uh, they've got a nice, nice bit of shootiness to them, but they can also hold, hold their own in a scrap. Um, I've gone with a slightly different basing feel here, trying to get the coming out of a woody feel to it. So as you can see, we've got high foliage, um, as well as lots of coloured flowers and so on in there, just to, to give it that sort of feel of, they, these are like the sneaky guys. Um, I've gone, still kept the same colour schemes um elements that I have with the rest of the army with the red on the fletching on the arrows um other than that it's all I, i've kind of gone robin hood with it kind of fits perfectly um 
so yeah these guys are are kind of like the centerpiece unit and yeah i've really enjoyed doing them i've now got my 995 and i'm going to be looking forward to getting these on the table and see what kind of check and cause cheers here i am again with my next element obviously not ogres one of the things that attracted me to the ogre army is the fact that they can take goblins i love goblins they give me a good laugh especially when i'm putting them together in painting and this is my first full regiment of them hopefully of many we'll see so as you can see went full multi-base on this that's how i can do that if i want to um, did a few modifications to the actual kit itself and one they come with these little mall pups right here and i decided to put one of those in the middle and from there I realized that this, the, you know, this piece right here is actually a metal goblin bigot. And I figured out, oh, it would look pretty cool to have one of them actually pointing the, you know, the mall pup in a direction. So, also when I got to know the kit, the kit is fantastic, by the way. Like, the amount of options in the goblin kit is almost silly. I mean, just doing this one regiment, I have got piles of bits left, including enough to build a couple of goblin characters. So I'm going to eventually get around to making my own bigot and using another one probably for a crocodile wrangler, whatever I can get, yeah, you know, make use of them. But one of the coolest things about this kit is when you look carefully, you can see well, there's a Chaos Dwarf helmet, there's a, rat, a Ratkin helmet over here, a couple human ones, which fits the lore of the goblins, which is they're great at making all sorts of weird contraptions, but they can't forge. They have no idea how to build their own stuff. So they just steal whatever they, you know, it's not nailed down. Including a few things that are nailed down because you've got a, cl a club here that's got nails through it. So that's some goblins. They are looking to be a wonderful chaff unit. Great for a laugh, which is what we're all about with this. So next up will be the last of my ogre warriors. Let's see what they look like. And, oh, everyone, everyone again, John again, my last unit for, my last element for my ambush army, last unit for it, which is another pack of ogre warriors with shields. Yes, I know I've done a couple of these before, but they are kind of the core of a good ogre force. Like, they represent, they're durable, which makes them excellent thick chaff, they're mobile with a six inch move, and they hit pretty damn hard. So here, to give things a little bit more unique, I actually took the axe from the two-hander kit and shaved it down just a little bit to make it into a single-hander. One of the things I've tried to do, and if you look back at all the videos with my ogres in it, is that the heads are always in different ways, different patterns, to try and make them look a bit more unique. And like I said, with this... I'm done, ready to go on this ambush journey. Uh, I said 995, no magic items, who needs them? And you've seen everything for me now. So looking forward to getting these guys out for on the table, get some battle reports and hopefully smacking around the other guys a bit.